Hello everyone. As you can probably tell, I am speechless with excitement to be here in the world's finest graduate class of speech language for So I was bragging about it. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me over. Incredibly grateful to Dr. Janice Light for this wonderful opportunity. I am happy to share with all of you some of my story and a glimpse through my perspective on AAC. As a child, I loved to talk and yak away to glory at every possible opportunity I could get. At school, my talkative nature and my non-stop questions were the bane of many of my teachers' existence, <laughs> especially Sister Mercy, my English teacher, whom I nearly gave a nervous breakdown <laughs> in my restless spirit and constant interruptions. On one occasion, fighting back her tears, Sister Mercy asked me, Godfrey, do you think there may be a reason why you have two ears and just one mouth? <laughs> I think speech language pathology is one of the noblest professions in existence precisely due to the reason that we have got the proverbial five senses but only one voice. When voice and speech get suppressed, for any reason, the input of information far exceeds output, leading to a state of chaos and pain within the human being. Speech language pathologists help empower individuals find their voice, a role which puts each one of you in a place of incredible power and of great responsibility. I know with my charming personality, straight from the city of brotherly love, my fabulous accent, and my almost Greek godlike features, <laughs> it made it tough to place me. I originally belong to the beautiful country of India. I am a biomedical engineer and a research scientist by profession. In addition to designing medical devices and formulating pharmaceuticals, some of my passions include the great outdoors, aviation and avionics, robotics, music and theater, linguistics and semantics, serving as a research fellow in anesthesiology and critical care medicine at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, my work with the IRC on AAC, and my family. Not a long time from today, when I was still young and dashing graduate student doing my master's in biomedical engineering at Drexel University, I began to notice subtle changes in my balance and my speech. In addition to the challenging and often humorous consequences at enunciating certain words, people around began to think that I was probably partying too much and assumed I was perhaps in high spirits. Some of my friends, who were familiar with my sense of humor and my talents in mimicry, thought it was all one big, funny act, and I played along. About a year into my studies, I was diagnosed with a rare, fatal, neurodegenerative condition. The prognosis was very bleak, and there was no treatment or cure. The silver lining was not having any chemo or painful surgeries for my condition. At this point, I was still halfway from a graduation. There was no time for denial. The woods were lovely, dark and deep, but I had big loans to pay and promises to keep to cut a long story short, I sped up my studies and graduated almost a year in advance. I found a job just in time before the symptoms became more prominent. As months and years went by, I felt a deepening void within me, resonating with the lyrics of a Neil Diamond song. I am, I said, to no one there, and no one heard at all, not even the chair, 
I am a cried, I am said I, and I am lost, and I can't even say why, leaving me lonely still. With my training, as a biomedical engineer, I was able to come up with a variety of strategies to facilitate communication, including putting together my very own speech devices to help me to function as a high-level professional and as a dedicated family man. After several tests, evaluations, biopsies and scans lasting over nearly a decade, my condition was diagnosed as motor neuron disease, possibly a rare, atypical and non-classical form of ALS, unique only to me. And although the road has been very tough on many levels, my wonderful team of doctors continue to be amazed with the level of activity that I am able to pursue. Today, I am working on several exciting and novel technologies, in addition to concepts for economically priced, next generation AAC devices and technology. One of my current projects is to substantially shrink the ginormous and extremely expensive surgical microscopes used in various delicate surgeries, such as neurosurgery, ophthalmology and microsurgery. It is almost an oxymoron, if you will, to refer to these mammoth systems as microscopes. The digital version that I am working to build not only offers advanced features and portability, but it comes at a fraction of the cost of the larger optical systems. It promises to bring disruption at a global scale and transform the way a surgeon looks at surgery, literally and figuratively. I was deeply moved by a poignant question raised at the 2012 AAC State of the Science conference about patients with ALS requesting to be taken off the ventilator. I have been thinking since then about what could be done for individuals with locked-in syndrome and for patients with physically debilitating neurodegenerative conditions. gentleman in this picture, as you may know, is Stephen Hawking, smiling ear to ear while floating in zero gravity. And even though Dr. Hawking has been battling ALS for over four decades, he surely seems to have found the elusive thing that Victor Frankly calls meaning in life. Inspired by the basic tenets of logotherapy and Abraham Maslow's seminal work on the hierarchy of human needs and humanistic psychology, I am working towards concept devices for a line of technology combining my passions in assistive technology, robotics, neuroscience, and aviation. I have grown to fondly dub this line assistive avionics to enable individuals with significant physical disabilities and debilitating neurodegenerative conditions to pursue flight training with redundant levels of safety. And going a step further, this may very well seem utopian today to have the choice for them to pursue the possibilities of a career in aviation. I also find that assistive avionics can be used as a beautiful metaphor to symbolize the strategies, no pun intended, for rising above the established paradigms of what is believed to be possible for individuals with significant disabilities and their employment options, even here on terra firma. As Da Vinci famously exclaimed, for once you have tasted flight, you will walk the earth with your eyes turned skywards, further you have been and 
There you will long to return. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Light, for this incredible opportunity, and to each one of you for allowing me to share my perspective on AAC. technologies for many years now and in the process having lots of fun with them I am sure Sister Mercy would be impressed <laughs> I do not believe in any limits there are several frontiers beneath and beyond and for AAC the sky is only the beginning
great question. Thank you so much for asking. I had already built my own prototype system for converting text to speech long before I knew it was called an AAC system. I had met with a few SLPS, but obviously they had not done their training here at Penn State. None of them indicated to me the world of infinite potential that could open up, even if I was not responding to exercise and treatment. I guess this is one of the reasons why I have become an evangelist for AAC technology. So is it your app that you're using right now, um, Godfrey, or are you using a commercially available app? I'm using a customizable free app. And I know you use social media a ton, I see you on Facebook. And do you use an alphabet board at home too, or do you mostly use your iPhone? variety of devices including a couple of tablets, my PC, and an old Dell Palm top. Unfortunately, as of now, not very well.
there have been several challenges. The toughest one so far would be the process of job applications and interviewing. I have had interviews last for over six hours. all the wonderful pictures of your daughter. She's mm -hmm. adorable. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you'd be willing to share some um, thoughts and experiences on the use of ASC to communicate with your family.
Wonderful question. As time goes by, it's getting much easier to communicate with my family. With smartphones, life has become so much more convenient. That is, of course, if the phone is not being over smart. I put my daughter to bed each night with YouTube songs and she will not allow me without my phone or tablet. I keep in touch with my wife throughout the day on WhatsApp. I use Skype to communicate with my extended family back home. AAC augments my communication but I have always believed the real communication with family is through the heart, far beyond the evolution of words or technologies.
First, don't lose hope. Neurodegenerative diseases can be daunting. The way I find meaning in the manifestation of painful symptoms is perhaps best epitomized by a quote from Rocky Balboa, the Philadelphia boxer. It ain't how you hit, but how hard you get hit, and keep moving forward, how much you can take and keep moving forward. My heart goes out to your friend, but encourage her to keep her hopes high, and to pursue a dream even, a dream that may seem impossible today can very well become tomorrow's reality.
I do not have a photo right now on my laptop, so I am going to have to use a 1,000 words. <laughs> but the wearables would include a line of devices much like the smart watches, integrated with multisensory inputs and with intelligent artificial intelligence software. Technology is shrinking at an exponential rate. Devices are going to get smaller, faster, faster, and cooler. So we have time just for one more question, Godfrey, and I'm going to seize the floor. So this group <laughs> are about to um, go out um, in the real world and try to make a difference in the lives of kids and adults who rely on AAC and their families. And what recommendations would you give to them as they kind of transition out of here into their next their next lives beyond <laughs>
beautiful question, Dr. Light. When an individual is faced with communication disorders, it impacts everyone from the individual to his family to the society. I would encourage each one of you to look not just at the person, but look at the impact your work is going to have on the family. You are transforming society one individual, one family at a time. Everyone has got a deep and powerful story to share. Thank you so much for choosing to help people find their voices. That's great advice, uh, Godfrey. I can't thank you enough for coming up and spending the morning with us. For me, every year when you come, it's like the highlight for me of that semester and that year. Uh, professionally, I always take away so many lessons from what you have to share with us. And I think beyond that, on a personal level, Godfrey, you have such an inner peace inside and you find so much joy in life. And I think for me, I always look at that and think these are such valuable lessons for me and for all of us on a personal level to take away. So thank you so, so much.